Amazon to work with an indigenous shaman. Um, there was actually a film of, of this particular piece of research called Night of the Liana. And um, it's only been shown in, uh, I think, two places in the world, one of which was Amsterdam at the 2002 Ayahuasca Conference. Um, you know, needless to say, this is not, not really a mainstream kind of subject. Um, the uh, conclusion that the three scientists had uh, at the time was that, uh, yes, knowledge can be gained from Ayahuasca, but it's difficult fruitful but difficult. Uh, if only because the methods of science and uh, ayahuasca shamanism are, are so different. Uh, science seeks to formulate hypotheses that can be reproduced and tested by anybody, <coughs> anywhere. Whereas uh, ayahuasca shamanism centers on the subjective experience that cannot be reproduced. You cannot have the same visions uh, twice, nor can somebody else have the same visions as you. So, in terms of methodology, it's like uh, oil and vinegar. Um, so, mixing uh, science and shamanism is uh, a delicate art. But just like with oil and vinegar, if you <coughs> get the proportions right and use enough, enough energy, you can come up with an interesting result where one plus one equals three. <clears throat> or the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Well, I published an account of uh, that experience in 2001 in a book called Shaman's Three Time, a book co-edited with Francis Huxley. And um, five years after publishing that account, uh, a, a fourth scientist contacted me. His name is Scott Francois. And he's the uh, director of the Institute for Tuberculosis Research at the University of Illinois in Chicago. And um, he was uh, looking for uh, uh, a collaboration with an Amazonian shaman. Um, he's been looking for a remedy for tuberculosis for a very long time. Tuberculosis is a disease that kills too many people a year, mainly poor people. Um, it kills people by puncturing their lungs, and uh, the uh, bacterium has become resistant to antibiotics. Um, Scott Francois is not in it for the money. Uh, if he finds a solution, he will publish it in the public domain and seek to develop the cheap, cheapest possible remedy um, with the help of not-for-profit foundations. Um, Franz Blau and his colleagues have been uh, testing thousands of substances in their lab <coughs> over the years, unfortunately without much success. Um, they compare this work uh, to looking for the people in the haystack. Um, before contacting me, Franz Blau was aware that many remedies have been developed on the basis of medicinal plants identified by rainforest animals. <coughs> and he was aware that Amazonian shamans use hallucinogenic plants as tools for knowing, and he was prepared to avail himself to this experience. Well, when we met, I told him that uh, linking his scientific career to ayahuasca shamanism uh, was risky. He said that uh, he wasn't concerned about that because he already was the director of his research institute. And the only thing he, <coughs> the only thing he really cared about uh, was finding a remedy for tuberculosis. So this was just the man for the job as far as I was concerned. And so I accepted to help him, this time around, not as an anthropologist seeking to test his hypothesis, but simply as a, as a go-between and as a translator between a, a scientist and a shaman. So I contacted Guillermo Arrevalo, who Marvin mentioned previously. Uh, he's a very well-known uh, Shipibo uh, Ayahuasca. Um, in 1994, he published a book called Medicinal Plants and Their Benefits for Health, which was uh, published 
with the Federation of Indigenous Organizations of the Peruvian Amazon. So Arevalo is uh, recognized by his peers. Um, it turns out that before becoming an Ayahuasquero, he actually worked as a nurse in the Amazon Pro Hospital in Pucallpa. Uh, so he is a person who has a foot in, in both worlds. Um, his point of view on the matter is that he is pleased to make his knowledge available to science in the name of public health. And as long as his knowledge is not exploited for profit, he's happy to share it uh, for free. So um, six weeks ago, uh, I accompanied Scott Franz Blau to uh, Guillermo Arenado's place outside the Iquitos in a kind of forest retreat. And uh, these two uh, specialists uh, spent 10 days together. Um, despite obvious differences, one of them runs a high-tech lab and the other operates in the dark and modified states of consciousness. The common ground between the two of them was obvious. And they both seek to relieve human suffering by working with medicinal plants and substances. Well, it turns out that Guillermo Arevalo has cured several tuberculosis patients with a plant called boa lasca, or vine of the boa, which does not have a Latin name. Uh, given by science, just as a plant kind of unidentified by science, but long identified by Shipibo uh, shamans. So um, Scott Franz Blau was pleased to take an extract of Boa Alaska prepared by the shaman back to his lab in Chicago, and there are uh, mice that suffer from a human form of tuberculosis that are um, currently. Um, uh, ingesting for Alaska as we speak. And uh, Franz Blau should have the results of, these, uh, of this preliminary investigation of this plant uh, early next year. It's kind of funny to think of the, the boa inside the mouse for once. <laughs> um, the, um, the scientists uh, had several ayahuasca experiences and found that uh, gaining insights about his personal life was effortless. Uh, but focusing on his work in uh, these modified states of consciousness was uh, uh, difficult. The shaman commented that ayahuasca is like a school and uh, after three or four times, it is not possible to gain a complete understanding. He said, I've been uh, studying with ayahuasca for 32 years, and I'm still learning. The um, scientist uh, was back in the safety of his lab, I can say, um, says that he firmly intends to return to the Peruvian Amazon to work with Guillermo and this time to uh, spend a longer period of time to get to. So this is a, a report in progress. Uh, it's difficult to conclude because it's, we're at such a beginning. It's taken all this time finally for these two uh, arms of humanity to come together and to learn how to uh, talk with one another. And, um, my conclusion, uh, to, to sum it up, is that the name of the game is bicognitivism. Bicognitivism is like bilingualism. It's having the capacity to have several ways of knowing in one's head at the same time. In other words, the point is not to throw out uh, uh, rationalism, rationalism with the bathwater, but to be able to be a rational observer on the one hand, and also to be able to see things from a shamanic point of view. Um, this is simply uh, you have more tools with which to understand the world, uh, more angles. If you think in terms of uh, a soccer game, when you see a soccer game on television, you have the main angle that films the action, and from time to time you have the reverse angle that 
and show you 